What's going on, everybody? Kenny here, also known as Silent85. Uh, I wanted to do another vlog and talk about something. Forgive the setup. Uh, I'm currently out of town, but I had something on my mind, and then I want to speak to you heart to heart. Uh, this is mostly concerning for people that are trying to break away from what I am calling religious programming. Uh, I know that sounds a little harsh, but hear me out. As we're coming up, we're introduced to certain ideals and beliefs, right? Most of the time, these are good ideals and beliefs. They help you live a moral life. Uh, you know, they help you live a good life. But at the same time, for me anyway, uh, coming up, it was rough, really rough. When mentally, I, I didn't process that way. I, I was. It's very hard to conceive of building my life around um, and putting wholeheartedly into things that I can't see or that um, is supposed to rule my life and I'm supposed to give uh, my full heart and worship to a deity for instance what I didn't have problems with with things in front of me things in my life myself uh, other people um, obviously I was into comics video games and all and everything else um, but when I was younger I may have believed that these were real but at the same time, as you get older, you realize that, and spoilers here for real life, you realize that ancient stories, ancient texts, comic books, games, books, all, all types of media, except for obviously the news, um, most of it is fairy tales. Most of it is stories being told, sharing about these characters that have been created by human minds and, you know, whatnot. And it's, it's really hard, it was hard for me to differentiate between those and what I'm being taught from the Bible. So, obviously the biggest difference here is that this book, the Bible, has been around for thousands of years, uh, written and edited by real men in real life, although obviously inspired by what they believe to be some holy inspiration or divine inspiration. What was hard for me was that coming up, I had to play a role for um, equal parts survival and equal parts, you know, wanting to dive into it and I, at some level please my parents, please, you know, whatever, and to try to have faith and, you know, the stories of uh, these biblical characters and massive floods and massive, you know, there was genocide, there was rape, there was all kinds of stuff. Obviously, that stuff is candy coated as you're a kid, but as you get older, you realize. This is a part of the teachings. Uh, there's old school, new school, a resurrection, um, a revelations of coming back, so on and so forth. It's hard when you invest your life in that as a kid and you realize that that's not how you want to live, but it's still a part of your life. The mantras, the rituals, the prayer. Um, it's real. It was really hard for me to shake that. Um, and I had to convert some of it into my own personal stuff, what, um, mentally what I've done, because that structure mentally was there. I mean, I was, you know, um, I was taught to pray, I was taught to, you know, read a book and gain guidance from it, which, again, can be applied to pretty much any book, especially with self-help. Um, so how do you convert that? How do you how do you shake that way of life? You know, how do you shake those daily or weekly rituals and gatherings and whatnot? Well, the gathering is one thing for like church. I would argue is actually uh, a decent way for community to be built. Right. The only problem I have with it is that when you get into hardcore churches that teach you that God is the only way of life, God can only help you, God is the only one that can change your life, God is the only one that can give you strength. It takes away from you. It takes away from you as a person. And I think it's up to us to recognize that and to realize that there are also some organizations out there that this is a business. It's a business for them. Um, and, you know, you, you got to kind of realize that. And everybody's going to have their feelings about their church, about their community, about their organizations. Um, but again, getting back to it, I, I would say that it's a good source of community. You know, it's a good source of meeting people and whatnot. I've even had some family members that got married to folks that they met at church, you know, and they're equally minded. 
Um, so the thing about prayer, for what I've done with prayer, I've turned it into a pretty much every so often a mantra. A mantra is something you say to yourself to re, you know, reinforce how you feel about yourself, certain things, life, the universe, whatnot. Um, in prayer, obviously, you're asking for a blessing, you're asking for forgiveness, you're asking to watch over certain people for guidance and whatnot. In turn to that, what I do is I've come up the mind that we are a part of something greater. I don't deny that. But there is a physical reality that we're a part of that is the greater. Um, the universe, um, you know, existence, whatnot. Human beings alone, we're a part of something greater. We're a part of a global community. Um, it's funny because the Bible teaches that one world is a bad thing, right? Um, and so it's taught that, you know, in Revelations, the second coming, and uh, battle against Satan and whatnot. And in my brain, and again, uh, I'm drawing on knowledge that I really haven't, I haven't touched the Bible in probably five or six years, but um, that is, again, a bit of a, a trap mentally, because, you know, you're, to me, back in the day, I was, I had the mindset of like, I was just waiting, you know, I was just waiting to be relieved, to be, to exit um, in some ways, and you know, it kind of puts you in the mindset, why even struggle with real life when, you know, you believe in God, you believe in Christ, and you're eventually going to be with Him. Why even try? You know, just go about your normal day in a robotic style and get through it, you know. So, that was a problem I always had. And it, again, it was something I had to shake, and it took it took a while. It took years. Um, it takes a lot of mental strength. And the key is to not give up. To not give up to escape that, to shake it off and be your own person, you know, and be who you want to be. So, you know, again, I just talk about this because I recognize that for some people, this is a struggle. You're not, you know, there's a part of you that doesn't want to deal with this. It's too much weight, you know, it's too much. And it's very hard to believe that because it takes a renewal of faith. You got to keep doubling down mentally and keep, you know, Re, uh, reinforcing what you're taught as a kid and again for me it was just um, it just didn't fit it didn't feel right it, it wasn't me you know so um, it's it's tough going from putting everything into a deity a god and putting everything back into yourself because for a long time you've been relying on faith and of course faith is the evidence of things unseen that's what we're taught growing up But for me, it affected my self-confidence. It affected my self-evident traits that I knew I could offer the world. And I knew I could do it myself. And for the most part, the last few years, since I've shaken it, since I'm still working on it, um, I have been more proud of my, I've been prouder of myself. And obviously if I say pride is a downfall, that's, that's fair. You, can't, you can be too proud. It's very true. But at the same time, pride is a good thing. Because when you have pride in yourself, when you have a little bit of ego to do good for yourself, for human beings, for the communities, um, to really put out positivity into the universe. And that's my practice. I always, you know, I always, in my mantra, it's a part of it, you know, forgive me for any, for any negativity that I put out into the ether or the energy um, and into myself. You know, because I'm speaking to myself, but I'm also speaking to uh, the universe. You know, because, again, teachings coming up is that verbal um, manifestation, sort of. But negative energy you put out will be returned, basically. Karma, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's the same thing as in Christianity, you know. Uh, power of the word, basically. Um, and so, it's funny, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in Christianity that has just been modified from real life, that has just been modified from other religions. And that's another key, because where do you decide who's right and who's wrong, you know? It's funny, just a real quick story before we wrap up here. My, um, a family member that unfortunately um, was a source of some very dark periods in my life as a child, um, I once asked him, I said, you know, maybe, maybe everybody, like every different religion goes to their own heaven. Uh, I was in the back seat, and um, I was probably seven, eight years old. I was in the back seat. They were in the passenger seat. They turned around. They slapped me, and they said, no, 
God is the only God, and anybody else will be going to hell. You know. So, how do you, with that kind of programming, I mean, you know, how do you candy coat that, um, you know, you're trying to save people's souls from heaven, but at the same time, you're contributing to what be what could be a very, very uh, hard thing to shake in their life to not be who they really want to be and not be who they're told to be. It's rough. But if you are going through this as I did and as I am, I wanted to provide this video to let you know you're not alone. You're not alone in this. So hang in there. Stay strong. And, you know... If you decide to go back, if you decide that that's part of your faith and it's a part of your life, then that's cool, man. Be who you are. But for those that, you know, go through this and you faced abuse at the hand of a Christian or you faced mental struggles or mental, you know, stops, faith crisis, what whatnot, just remember that you're taught this as a kid, but you're now an adult. You're now a teenager, almost, and... You can make your own decisions. You can live your own life. Be who you are, who you truly want to be. And that's how you live a happy life. That's how you live a life worth being proud of. And not trying to make other people proud. Including an unseen force or an unseen deity. Just remember, you are a part of something greater. But it doesn't have to be personified. It doesn't have to be a hierarchy in a spiritual realm. Of course, hierarchy and personified are fairly crazy words, but they express perfectly um, how my mental state works. And if you need to look them up, go for it. Personify is adding human characteristics to an inanimate object or inanimate thought. And of course, um, I totally forgot the other word I used. Um, yeah, I lost it. But anyway, you see my point. Again, you're awesome. Never let the world tell was, and um, stay sane, and stay safe. See ya.